Struggled so unbelievable. See, it's so... Oh my goodness. This is part... I don't know. Of trying to find creatives on YouTube. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump straight into this one. And this is... How to actually lock in. From Sleepy Charlie. And from an editor's point of view, I'm gonna look at how everything was put together and structured out. See if there's some effects in here or some interesting stuff to do with editing that I can give more of an explanation for. That being said, let's jump straight into it. So how do you do it? How do you achieve everything that you want and become what you would call successful? Well, to be honest, I don't really know yet. But there's one thing I discovered that has exponentially improved my progress in life, in my work, has quickly helped me realize my potential, and has given me what I consider to be a true purpose. So okay, so right off the bat, I can already see that the format itself is in that, I want to say, four by three, is that what it is? But anyway, the format is different than how a regular 16 by nine project is. And you can do that in whatever editor you're using. You just click custom format and then, you know, put in the dimensions of it and then continue on with that. And it kind of seems like, it might, I don't know, it might just be me, but he recorded this and later on did a voiceover on top of it because that's just how the audio sounds. It sounds like it's detached from the actual video itself. Successful. Well, to be honest, I don't really know yet. And as far as color grade goes, in this shot right here, you can see there's inside the shadows, there's some greens, a little bit warm, kind of vibrant. He does have a section where the title is tracked and you'll notice when it speeds up, uh, he added some motion blur on top of it as it moves. And the titles have a different type of font and they're different colors throughout and he likes to scatter it a little bit which i've seen a few times now with like the sentences and, and stuff like that has given me what i consider to be a true purpose so what was that one thing that i discovered well i can't tell you that yet you'll click off the video i still need my retention man i'll get there but first i have to take you back back to may 28th of 2024 so like literally a few months ago it's 12 a.m. So yeah, we had a, a match cut there with the drastic difference in, and there wasn't a light on anymore. Pretty much indicating the difference in daytime and nighttime. And so just, you know, a simple match cut. And it was pretty clean though. It was pretty clean though. I had some context for my situation. I'm currently five months into my YouTube journey. I've been constantly working on videos, posting at least two per month, trying to make a viral hit, which was totally not motivated by that one video. Trying to write something that tugs at the heartstrings of thousands of people. Trying okay, just breaking down this little section here. Uh, so we got some title tracking as well in a different color, red. A lot of his colors that he's using here are drastically different from the background it's being applied to. It's It's got a blue tone over top of it uh, because of the light and all that. So the red is very, it contrasts very well. And then he's got a stabilized tracking on the mouse whenever he moves it, which a good plugin for that, especially if you're on Final Cut specifically, is from Pixel Film Studios. And then he has a simple, you know, camera whip transition, which simply put, all he did was while he was recording, he quickly went to the right. He cut it during that, that motion where it's kind of blurred over. Trying to write something that tugs at the heartstrings of thousands of people. Trying to narrate something that hits home for millions of people. I edit, I color grade, I hit upload. And to my disappointment, I failed to hit the big scary YouTube algorithm. But I'm not one to give up that easily. So I do it again. And Okay, so that was a very that was a very smooth transition into the the music at least, but let's see, what is he using here? I wanna say Da Vinci? Is that what it is? But I mean there's a lot of it's interesting, there's like a jazz track over it. I don't know, I just said it like that jazz track that's very um 
very jazzy. <laughs> I mean, whenever he was talking about doing voiceovers, he did a voiceover called Blah 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 that he put in the background here. That was kind of faint. It hits home for millions of people. Again, with the color grade, the highlights are kind of brought down at a capping point. Happens a lot with cinematic color grading is on the waveforms, the color wave, you bring down the highlights right at the capping point and then bring up the shadows. So it has that kind of grayish, foggy type of look. It, it, it happens a lot inside of cinematic grading. To my disappointment, I failed to hit the big scary YouTube algorithm, but I'm not one to give up that easily. So I do it again and again and again, still nothing. And that brings us to now, wondering what I'm doing wrong, watching the bear. And then it hits me. You see, there's a scene in season one where Carmen, who's the main character, by the way, who's a chef who once worked in a restaurant with a Michelin star. In other words, Carmen is really good at what he does. But Carmen literally falls asleep watching a cooking video. And then he proceeds to dream about cooking. He's constantly taking down notes for recipe ideas or ingredients or I don't, I don't know what chefs write down in notebooks. I'm not a chef. And as the show goes on... <laughs> Again... He did the whip transition, which you can see throughout. It just cuts during the motion over top of the clips that are playing. He had, which I do this a lot as well. He has a overlay that's blended over top to give it that watching on a screen type of pixelated feel. Yeah, there's background noise with the water and different whooshes when it goes across on the whip transition and the music cuts out for comedic effect for this sequence. Yes. For ingredients or I don't I don't know what chefs write down in notebooks. I'm not a chef. And as the show goes on, something becomes more and more apparent to me. This dude hardly thinks about anything besides cooking. And that's what did it. That's what made me realize what I was missing. Obsession. You see, I was so engulfed. Okay, so you know, we got a mask here that's slightly, I'm gonna guess he did this manually instead of kind of like rotoscope. There's different AI rotoscope, stuff like that, because it is a little bit jittery on right here. You see, I was so engulfed in trying to hit the big YouTube algorithm that I forgot why I even do this in the first place. I love doing it. And the only way I can reach this level of relative success that I have in mind for myself is to dive headfirst into complete obsession over my work, paying it. All right, so that's pretty interesting. I'm going to tell you exactly how that was done. Essentially, this is actually pretty, pretty sick. Essentially, what's going on is the camera is on a moving tripod slider, if you want to call it that to where it's going a certain direction. He has three different shots that he took in different positions of the frame. And all he did was masked around those positions and then blended the edges, faded it. And since the camera is in the same motion every single time, uh, all he had to do was, was kind of stack those on top of it. That's how you get that movement with three of him. Complete obsession over my work, paying attention to every minute detail, spending 30 minutes perfecting one camera angle, trying new editing effects with every project, spending an hour color grading one shot. I'm not yep. kidding. Effects with every project, spending an it hour is. color grading one shot. It is Da Vinci Resolve, because if you have seen a no tree, you know what that is, using Da Vinci shot i'm not kidding by the way that is brutal but it's fun i think it's fun spending hours and hours looking for the perfect music yeah. but not with music bed baby oh yeah One, this video two, is in fact brought to One, you by music two, bed ready. Listen, I've tried pretty much all the other music websites out there none of them have come close to music bed before i add time found music bed i struggled so unbelievably see it's so oh my goodness these shots are so diverse but they look clean like this angle looks clean. A lot of the, I don't know what lens he's using or what, but just clicking through these. None of them have come close to music bed. Before I found music bed, I struggled so unbelievably much to find the right. Cause you got very contrasting colors in different spots. You got the blue in the corner here and then the red up here. And then even cutting through, 
you got the yellow, the blue, the red, the white, and it all contrasts very well. You got the green in the plant right here. And yeah, it just looks very clean when, you, when you're putting it together. I eat music for my videos. I wasted so much time searching for music that could convey the emotions and tone I envisioned for my project. And what did all that searching get me? The classic. That works, I guess. But not Musicbed. No, no. Musicbed is made for filmmakers. For me? They simplify the process More tracking. of finding the perfect songs with innovative search tools like their AI-powered search by song feature. Like, watch this. I searched up one of my favorite songs by, I don't know, Noah Khan, and it instantly shows me a bunch of options that are similar to that song. With over 60,000 songs, Musicbed has the largest... Yep. There's the... And I've mentioned this often. The sound design behind this, him scrolling, adding that subtle sound effect that that's clicking. If you really listen to it, there's like a clicking sound effect whenever he's scrolling down. Over 60,000 songs, Musicbed has- Adding that really gives it depth to the, the shot itself, instead of just showing a screen scrolling, which I mean, you could, but adding that sound effect of the clicking kind of going down gives it more depth and, and makes it overall pretty nice to that song. With over 60,000 songs, Musicbed has the largest curated collection of music for your projects. Well, on the other hand, these other sites really only offer you cheesy, predictable melodies. I'm telling you right now, Musicbed stuff is actually good. Like, I throw some of these in my Spotify playlist. Good. If you're a creator wanting to connect deeply with your audience, I seriously cannot recommend Musicbed enough. Yep. Make the switch to Musicbed and you can start your four- I see a trend going on here. There's a lot of blues, reds, and yellows, a lot of contrasting colors when it comes to his shots and titles and text. And he likes to scatter the titles a lot when it comes to that unique design. 15 day free trial with the link in my description. Trust me, you will not regret it. But anyway, Overall, just continuing to push myself harder and harder and not worrying about pleasing the all-powerful algorithm. That's what it takes. Is it what you... Another shot here, but this one is a little bit easier because it's a, a straight camera angle. So he's easily able to kind of just cut it strictly down the middle in halves and then apply those together. Worrying about pleasing the all-powerful algorithm. That's what it takes. Is it what you space out thinking about? Is it what you dream about? Do you lose sleep over it? Would you skip lunch just to finish a project? If you want to reach that level of success and skill, you have to be able to dial in more than anyone else is willing to. You may not like the sound of all that work, God knows I definitely didn't, but that's what it's gonna take. That's all you have to find something you love to do, or even- Yep, there is a lot of sound design going behind this stuff here with the pen. It's all you have to find. The different clicking noises. Dial in more than anyone else is willing to. And all that kind of stuff. And it really adds into, into the overall project, showing how much detail he put, put into making the video. And yeah, it looks really nice. And again, I'm still seeing like a film grain type of look here when it comes to the overall film. It's just something that gets you kind of excited. It doesn't matter all that much. Set a goal, focus on nothing else other than just improving your skills, and most importantly, obsess. And you want to know what happened right after I figured this out? Well, I took this newfound work ethic, and I put that energy straight into my next video. I hit upload. Hey! Yeah, that was actually pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. He definitely has his own personality when it comes to making content. And we were able to kind of establish that and, and pick out what that was. Now, the overall tempo of the video was pretty upbeat on different moments, but it was, it did have the elements of being slower and then faster with the music and stuff that was applied to it. So it definitely had those elements that you would need in a film kind of like this. He showcased a unique personality in the one footage and color grading and titling and, and overall the, just the project, which is something that you definitely want to do when, when showing your personality in a project because not everybody has the same exact 
personality. And so reaching the point where you can actually show it in a project or what you create, how you speak or how you, how you, how you make videos is, is pretty important, especially on YouTube. And he definitely did a good job in showing that with this project. So with that being said, that'll be all for today. And I have found another creative on YouTube. If you have any other suggestions, leave a comment below and I will see you at the next edit.